Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech, and I'm going to talk to you about layout views and model space uh, for the purpose of setting up what a paper would look like if you were to digitally print it or to actually print it out on paper. Sometimes in industry, architects print out on very, very large pieces of paper using a plotter, which means the paper could be as wide as 44 inches. Or maybe somebody just wants to print out a letter sized piece of paper, which is eight and a half by 11. Inside our school and inside CAD class, we typically use a legal sized piece of paper, which is eight and a half by 14. And I'll show you how to set that up in just a moment. Right now, I wanna take um, this time to talk to you about the model space that I have preset over here. I just drew three colored houses and I put a blurb that you can read that talks about what a viewport is. I'll summarize basically what it says, but um, a viewport is just like a, it's like a, a window that you draw on a piece of paper to actually look at stuff that's in the model space. And I'll click on layout two just to show you what I mean by that. Like this is a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and there's a viewport preset onto it that just shows you a glimpse of what it's looking at. But I can right now, if I wanted to like draw a circle on this piece of paper or using annotations or something, I can type my name onto this piece of paper. And just to show you what's happening here is those objects that I just made are not showing up at all inside the model space. They're really just meant to be present on the piece of paper when it gets printed. This object here is the viewport and the stuff inside it is what the viewport is showing. If I wanted to change how the viewport is being shown, all I have to do is double click into it and it becomes active. And then inside here, I can go ahead and manipulate this space by let's say zooming in on the purple house if I wanted to, or maybe the red house or I'll just have an area where I can show the blue and the red house, and that's about it. So maybe I just wanna show the blue and the red house sort of centered on this piece of paper, but that purple piece is hanging out over there. So I'll double click back to the piece of paper, select the border size, and I'll actually just move the border a little bit. So you, now you can't see the purple part. And then I'll double click back on the piece of paper just to show you that that's really it. And now, as you can see, I have that viewport only showing that blue in the red house. Now maybe, like I said, I wanna switch this to legal size paper. So I'm gonna right click the layout tab and I'll hit page setup manager. I'll change layout two to show a piece of paper that's eight and a half by 14 inches wide. Whoops. And by doing that, you'll see the white space in the background does actually change size. If I wanted to, I can go ahead and delete this useless circle over here. And then maybe I want to resize this particular border to stretch out all the way to um, the edges of the paper. Not all the way to the edges of the paper, but close enough to where it's significantly showing a lot of the drawing. And then I can go ahead and, and zoom on this as much as I want again. Maybe I just want the purple house and the, the wording to appear, so I'll hit ZW for zooming in on the window. And I'll just draw my window what I want to display. And there it is, I have it nice and laid out. And then I can go ahead and print this and it will print just like this. But there's a lot more to it. And for that, I'm gonna switch over to the next layout tab. This one has been preset. So as you can see, there's actually multiple views of the same model space. And again, I'll bring you back to that model space and you can see it hasn't changed at all. It doesn't matter what I do on here. I can change it a little bit. So let me, uh, just to show you, if I do double click in here and then when I'm in the process of zooming stuff, if I accidentally draw on here or I purposely draw on here, then you'll see that that circle indeed is in the viewport. So when I move this around, you could see that the circle is actually moving in the viewport and that does appear on the model space. That's the circle I drew just now which is a lot different than if I drew the circle on the paper space. So right now I'm in the paper space and you can always tell by the way, by looking at the bottom, because this says paper, but I'm in the paper space right now. If I draw another circle right next to that circle, that circle, even though it's within the borders of the viewport does not appear in the model space because that circle, excuse me, as you can see is selectable here, just like my name is and just like the viewport border. So that circle is present only 
here on the paper. So it's kind of like useless compared to the model space. And again, just to show you that one circle's there, not the other one that I just drew. So this circle's on the paper, and this circle is in the viewport, which I can't even click it until I click in the viewport, and then that object can be manipulated. And this button down here, you can switch in and out as much as you like. Sometimes people get really stuck. Like if I zoom in on this viewport to where the viewport borders are beyond the limits of the screen, and then you click into the viewport, sometimes you get stuck only zooming in and out of here and you can't really pan out of it or zoom out of it. So that's why they have this button on the bottle to, to switch between model space and paper space. It allows you to quickly jump out of this view even if you're stuck and then go ahead and zoom out properly and, and resize this to whatever you like it to be. Okay, getting back to this one, as I was saying before, there are different viewports being shown here. When you wanna create a viewport, you're gonna to go to this layout tab. And this layout tab is indeed context sensitive, meaning it's not present in the model space. That layout tab only appears there when you open up the layout space. So if I click on that layout tab, you'll see some options to make viewports. I have the options of a rectangular viewport, a polygonal viewport, and an object viewport. This right here is a rectangular viewport. And as you can see, it's in the shape of a rectangle. I can click in it and manipulate it just like before. This is a polygonal viewport, kind of drawn in the shape of a house. But polygonal viewports can be drawn in any polygonal shape. Like I'll stick one right over here in between using just a quick usage of that command. And I'll press enter when I have it closed. And as you can see, this particular viewport is showing a very strange version of the, the drawing, but it's fine, it works. And after I click out of it back on the paper space, I can go ahead and manipulate the border as much as I like to kind of show a very, very specific version of it. And when the viewport is active, you could turn off the grid, even though the grid doesn't print anyway. So don't be fooled that having the grid on and off is, is particularly important. It is not. Notice that that particular viewport is showing up black right now and the others are showing green. I'll get to that at the very end. It's very important. Okay, so now we have rectangular viewports, which is pretty much known as a standard viewport. And then this is a polygonal viewport. These are different. These viewports are created using the viewport object command. And I'll show you how that works. First, on the paper space, I'm going to draw a circle here and I'll draw a polygon that is um, eight sides right here. Okay, so right now these are just shapes that are sitting on the paper space, just like this text is sitting on the paper space. But if I go to the layout command and I click on the object viewport command, I will turn this octagon into a viewport. And then if I do that again, I could turn this circle into a viewport. So those objects now became fully functional viewports in which I can click into them and, and zoom in on whatever I want and show off whatever I want. And that's basically how the viewport system works. So eventually you're gonna wanna lay this out on paper to make it look really nice. And I have one like preset uh, over here where I kind of like made a border. This, this particular thing has just a bunch of shapes and text on it, but I made a very beautiful curved border over here with a with some uh, lines drawn over here to create like a the illusion of a box in the right side of the piece of paper. I wrote my name on the bottom, kind of like a title block. And now when I try to print this particular thing out, it will very, very nicely. Let me actually scale it a little bit. There we go it'll very, very nicely appear on the piece of paper. So if I go to print, and I'll use a digital printer for this, um, the high quality of AutoCAD to PDF. Let me save and overwrite that. And as you can see, what pops up is a virtual piece of paper, of course, with the borderline that I drew and the title block and, and the images that I wanted to show from there. Okay, so that's why people draw on the paper. They want to be able to place information and put like these artificial borders over here to kind of show off those boxes. But as I was saying, 
there is one more important thing that you guys have to realize here. Those green borders are not green because I wanted them to appear green. I want them to actually disappear. So I'm going to erase these other viewports just to show you how it works. These viewports, if you look, appear on a very specific layer called viewports. I created this layer and we haven't talked about layers yet, but this is very simple for you to understand. I created a layer in AutoCAD to hold those objects. So each of those viewport objects actually sits on that layer and I made that layer's color by default green. And the reason why that is, is again, it's, it's, it's very special that you know it's bad etiquette to ever show the viewport border, ever. So you never want to be able to show it. So what you do is you set them all up the way you want and then inside the, the layer area, you just hit this little light bulb and it turns them off. And now those viewports are hidden. I can still see the grids, but that doesn't matter because grids don't print. And if I want to click in them and press F7, of course, that will make them go away. So the objects are still visible and they're still in the viewports. And I can go ahead and click in this viewport and resize it if I want to or, or resume it if I want to. But I still can't see the border. If I wanted to click the border and change what the viewport looked like, like if I wanted to change this polygonal viewport to not show that little purple edge, I can do that and then I'll click away from it and then I'll turn the viewports back off and again, be ready to print. The viewport borders will print as CAD objects unless you don't want them to. And if you don't want them to, you have to hide them using that layer feature. Okay, so that's how you use viewports for setting up the way your model space looks like on paper. And again, if you wanted to just create new viewports, I guess I should show you that too. I don't know if I showed that to you before, but I will um, erase these and go to that layout view and pick rectangular if I wanted to make a rectangular viewport. And I could even make them overlap, by the way. And maybe a polygon viewport, which I know I did before, but I'll show it again. Okay, that's about it. Thank you very much.